Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand praise this Amen. morning. Amen. He is worthy. Y'all can do better than that. Oh, yep. <laughs> Amen. I know we're few in number, but we can make more noise than that if we were at a sporting event mm -hmm. or watching our favorite team on TV. I know we would be louder than that. So I'm going to ask you one more time so that the people out there know that we have a zeal and a zest for the Lord in this house. Let's give the Lord a hand praise and make some noise. Yeah. God bless you and thank you for being here with us this morning. Um, I'm going to bring a message this morning entitled Speaking God's Language. My subtitle is, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably going to be asking you to say that along with me this morning a couple of times. But our scripture text is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 16, and I'm going to read that in your hearing from the God's Words translation, if you would allow me. And it starts off, brothers and sisters, when I came to you, I didn't speak about God's mystery as if it were some kind of brilliant message or wisdom. While I was with you, I decided to deal with only one subject, Jesus Christ, who was crucified. Mm -hmm. When I came to you, I was weak. I was afraid and very nervous. I didn't speak my message with persuasive intellectual arguments. I spoke my message with a show of spiritual power so that your faith would not be based on human wisdom but on God's power. Verse number six. However, we do use wisdom to speak to those who are mature. It is a wisdom that doesn't belong to this world or to the rulers of this world who are in power today and gone tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We speak about the mystery of God's wisdom. It is a wisdom that has been hidden, which God had planned for our glory before the world began. Right. Not one of the rulers of this world has known it. If they had, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory. Right. But as the scripture says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined the things that God has prepared for those who love him. None whatsoever. God has revealed those things to us by his spirit. Mm -hmm. The spirit searches everything, especially the deep things of God. Mm -hmm. After all, who knows everything about a person except that person's own spirit? In the same way, no one has known everything about God except God's spirit. Now, we didn't receive the spirit that belongs to the world. Instead, we received the Spirit who comes from God so that we could know the things of God that he has given us freely. We don't speak of things using teachings that are based on intellectual arguments like people do. Instead, we use the Spirit's teachings. We explain spiritual things to those who have the Spirit. A person who isn't spiritual doesn't accept the teachings of God's Spirit. He thinks they're nonsense. He can't understand them because a person must be spiritual to evaluate them. Spiritual people evaluate everything but are subject to no one's evaluation. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Now, I didn't read verse number 16 Amen. on purpose because I'm going to come to that. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, I'm not going to ask you to look at your neighbor or anything <coughs> like that this morning, but I just want you to say this into the atmosphere with me. It's not what you know. It's not what you know. It's who you know. It's who you know. Amen. Now repeat this after me also. I've got friends in high places. I've got friends, friends in high places. Oh, hallelujah. You need to give the Lord a hand praise on that. Yes. Hallelujah. We have friends in high places. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. I have to tell you guys, I'm really excited about this message today. And one young lady in particular, I know the pastor wanted to talk to you, but I specifically said to him, she needs to hear this message yes, this morning. Yes. I think that it is a message of encouragement, not just to her, but to all of us. Amen. Amen. Because it really is not what you know. Mm -hmm. 
But who you know. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so this is the kind of message that is going to put the wind in your sails this morning. This is the kind of message that's going to break some chains in here today. The chains of religion. Amen. Yes. This message touches on kingdom principles and the DNA of God. As disciples of Jesus Christ, we must figure out how to move the way God moves, amen? Right. How to talk the way God talks and how to think the way God thinks in order that we might be able to do the things that God does, amen? Right. The 16th verse, which I did not read, says to us, and it puts it this way, who has known the mind of the Lord so that he can teach him? Mm -hmm. However, we have the mind of Christ. Of Christ. It is so important that in these last days, we put on the mind of Christ because our own minds, our own ways, our own thoughts, our own perspectives fall short of the glory of God. The Bible puts it this way. His ways are above our ways and his thoughts are above our thoughts. Mm -hmm. So in order for us to be kingdom minded and tap into God's DNA, we must strive to put on the mind of Christ. Right. In other words, we must think like Jesus, and we must act like Jesus, and we must speak like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. Paul, the apostle, understood this principle. He was one of the greatest theologians of his day. He was the greatest teacher in all the land, and he was taught by someone named Gamaliel, amen, who would have been like our equivalent today of Harvard University. Amen? Right. Paul was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He studied the law day and night, night and day. He knew the Torah. He knew the word inside and out, backwards and forward. He was the most studied mind in all the land. Not only was he studied, but he knew how to speak it well. Amen? He was proficient in reading the scriptures and preaching aloud in public and in the synagogue. Mm -hmm. If Paul were alive today, you could say that he had a B.A. in Bible, his master's in divinity, and his Ph.D. in theology. Mm -hmm. He would make Billy Graham look like a first-year Bible student, amen? Mm -hmm. Somebody who just started to teach Sunday school. Paul, my friends, was the man. Right. Amen. Right. Paul, who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Paul, who was the first missionary. Paul, who was shipwrecked three times and survived each time. Who saw the first converts coming to the church. Paul, who saw prison bars fly open when he was singing hymns with Silas in the dungeon cell of a Roman prison. Mm -hmm. How many people would agree with me that Paul knew what he was talking about? All right. Amen. 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 Now, if you're like me, you may be saying to yourself, but I'm no Paul. Amen. All right. I might be like Peter, mm -hmm. impetuous, loud mouth. As a matter of fact, we know Peter had foot and mouth disease. Amen. Yes, he did. And Peter was always trumping up something and writing a check that he couldn't cash. Oh, amen. Now, we might be like that, but in no way are we like Paul. Amen. Mm -hmm. You may never have even graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. You may not have graduated from graduate school or undergraduate school. You may not have a college degree. But I want you to tell yourself right now, it's not what you know. Mm. It's not what you know. It's who you know. It's who you know. Amen. Amen. You can have all the book learning you want, but it's who you know. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. I know who I know. You all know what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's not what you know. It's, it's who, who you know. know. Amen. And when the who you know is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then you're in business, my brothers and sisters. Yes, when I tell you that you can call the God of the universe Abba Father, then that means you got friends in high places. Praise, praise God. Praise Amen. God. When I can tell you that you got a friend in Jesus and that he sticks closer than a brother, then you got friends in high, high places. places. Amen. Ooh, All right. That thing right there. Yes, you do. When you can testify that you have an advocate pleading before the Lord on your behalf, then you have friends yes, in yes, high yes, places. Yes. When you've got the great I am saying that you are the apple of his eye and that you are his greatest masterpiece, oh, then you got friends. By God, you got friends in high places. Oh, yes. Listen, you don't need a degree from the, sem I mean, this, 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 this seminary. seminary 
Because that was getting ready to say the cemetery. <laughs> and they teach all that dead religion. Oh, Father. Yeah, I'm going to make somebody mad this morning. Mm. I don't care. Praise God. Amen. You can have all of that. Mm. But you don't need that because you possess everything you need right now to be the greatest Christian disciple the world has ever seen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Right now. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Now, for me, this is where the message really gets exciting. Here's where we begin to see the mind of Christ. Here's where we tap into the DNA of God. The Bible says one man sows mm -hmm. and one man waters, but God yes, gets the increase. Yes, he does. Listen, you can't argue somebody into the kingdom. No. Nope. Amen? Nope. Let's just make it plain. Mm -hmm. It's God that persuades them. Mm -hmm. So all of us who have these lost family members and friends, you know, and they want to always get into a debate with you about the word. Mm -hmm. We already read that only those who are of the spirit can understand things of the spirit. Mm -hmm. So don't expect them to understand what you're saying when you're telling them about the Lord. My sister this morning said, mm -mm. they got to know God. Mm -hmm. They got to know when they hear Jesus knocking on the door. You can't open the door for them. Praise God. Mm -hmm. They have to open the door for themselves. And he is available to us. We just got to tune in to hear. Now, the Bible says to us not to argue or debate because God is the one that persuades. So what we need to do this morning, my brothers and sisters, is let go. We've all heard of this. And let God. Mm -hmm. Amen. To experience the power of God. All you have to do is make yourself available to him and watch how he will show up and show off. Yes, he will. Amen. If you trust and believe, see, you know, we have a problem. We say one thing. Praise God. We do something else. We say we trust God, but let us get in a tough situation. Then all of a sudden, we start saying, well, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I need to do this. Mm -hmm. Maybe right. I need to do that. Or maybe I didn't hear from God. Oh well, the devil is a liar. Yes, he is. That's his assignment to make you doubt God. And you people have heard me more than once say, the Bible says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Oh. If you're double-minded, you're a schizophrenic. Oh and you need a doctor. Oh, God. Oh. Now, I'm going to send you to Dr. Jesus because he got what you want. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But the word of God is praise God. Praise God. You can't take a pill. If you say you trust God, trust God. If you trust man, trust man. My God. Amen. Right. But you need to stand on the word of God. If he has brought you through a situation before, he is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And if he took you through once, he'll take you through again. Oh, yes. Amen. Yes. You yes. can't decide yes. when you want to trust him and when you don't. Oh, want to hallelujah. Either you do or you don't. Amen. 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 My God up in here. Yes. You know, God is one of those guys that come show up at the 11th hour. Oh, my. He might not show up on the front end. Mm -hmm. Amen. Wow. He might want to see how long you're going to shake in your boots but still hold on. <laughs> Amen. Because, you know, sometimes we get right there to the nail biting stage and be like, oh, God is not coming. God is not coming. Pastor David, I just have been praying and I haven't heard from God. <laughs> sometimes... God says, you know we don't ever want to hear no, do we? No. Okay? If somebody tells you no, you're not trying to hear that. You're going to talk to this one over here and this one over here until you, you get something yeah, until yeah, you don't hear what you want to hear. Yeah, yeah. Amen? Yeah. Understand that no is an answer. Oh, bless you. Amen? And sometimes God says, wait. Mm. Okay? I hear the Bible say, be still and know, and know that he is God. No, Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. He's going to show you. That way, you can't get the glory. Right. You can't say, I did so and so. All you can say is, boy, it was down to the last second, and God showed up. The people called me and said, this is not a local matter. This is a provincial matter, and you don't have to worry about it. Okay. That's, that's what I'll do. That is God will do. Won't he, my sister? Okay. Okay. Yeah. When everybody else tells you, oh, no, we can't do that. So... <laughs> What to do? I said what you can do. Okay. That was God 
showing up. Amen. Okay, he was waiting to see if you were going to throw your hands up. Mm. And as long as you held on, he did what you asked him to do. Mm. You keep holding on. Yeah. Regardless to what Peter could only stand for the short amount of time that he stood on the water because his focus was on Jesus. Yeah. When he started to look at all the wind and the storm going on around him, that's when absolutely he started to sink. Amen. When you find yourself at the weakest place you can be, you better be myopic in your vision and all you need to see is Christ and him crucified. Amen? That's the Lord. Oh, my God. Oh, my yeah. God, my God. In our scripture text, for this morning, we find Paul speaking to the church at Corinth. Yes. The church that he had established. The church that he had planted years earlier. And I want you to listen very closely to his words. I'm going to repeat them. He said, brothers and sisters, when I came to you, I didn't speak about God's mystery as if it were some kind of brilliant message or wisdom. Amen? All right. Here we have Paul the Apostle Paul, the theologian Paul, the church planter Paul, the missionary Paul, the author of the New Testament Paul. He understood quite possibly the most profound theological doctrinal statement that you can wrap your minds around. And here he was saying, it's not what you know. It's who you it's know. It's who you know. Uh, Amen. Amen. Mm. Jesus. Paul said, it's not about what I know. It's about who I know. I didn't come to you with excellency of speech, no. trying to impress you right. with my vocal acrobatics. Because yes. it's not about what I know. It's, cool. it's about who I know. Yes. Amen. Amen. He understood that all the knowledge he possessed, all the education he had obtained, and all the titles my people listening yes. online, that he had acquired were meaningless when it comes to the power of God. Oh, God. I don't care if you chief, apostle, shepherd, elect, whatever, whoever, the Lord High, Bishop, Archbishop, Metropolitan, whoso, whatever. None of that means anything to God. When he calls you, he going to say, David, my son. Yes, he is. Amen. Yes, he is. He going to say, Barbara, my daughter. Barbara. I'm not going to be bishop anybody. Nobody. No. Amen? All right. Paul said none of that matters. No, it doesn't. It's not about what I got, and it's not about who I know, what I know. It's, it's who, who I know. Amen. 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 All of that is meaningless when it comes to the power of God. Yes. Listen, you may not be the best public speaker. I know I'm not. Okay. And I certainly do not possess excellency of speech, as Paul put it. And let's not forget about Moses. Moses had a speech impediment. Amen. And as far as I know, my Bible says that God used him mightily. Mm. Amen? Amen? You may not be considered wise in the eyes of men according to the world's standards, but we kingdom people. Mm. Jesus. This is not our standard here. Come on now. We held to a higher standard. Come on now. Do we think we're better? No. We just are citizens of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And if we're citizens of the kingdom, there are certain words that are not in our language. Mm -hmm. Like I can't. Or I don't know. I can't help it. Uh, no. That's not what it says here. Mm -hmm. In my book, it says I can do all things. It says right here we have the mind of Christ. What do you mean you don't know? Mm -hmm. You better tap in to your DNA. Right. Because it's not what you know. It's who you are. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. You have to remind yourself that the Bible says that God chooses the foolish things the world. of the world to confound the ones that think they know everything. Okay? Okay? Because I don't care how smart a person is, if they're not spiritual, they do not understand the Bible. Mm. Amen. They will look at you like you got 12 heads when you start talking about how Jesus was resurrected. That's not possible. How could that? Oh, he probably just fainted. And they go, mm. but you know what happened. Yeah. And I know what happened. Mm -hmm. Amen. So it is not what you know. Scientists are just catching up with some of the things. 
that the Bible mentioned thousands of years ago. Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. What would he do? Because he wanted to go see if the earth was round or flat. Amen. When the Bible says that God sits on the circle of the earth, oh, why did he have to go see if it was round or flat? Believe what God says. <laughs> and, oh, he discovered. No, he, he did didn't not. Discover anything. <laughs> There's so much truth hidden in this word. Things that God has already revealed ages past that we're just catching up to. Oh. And when we do, we think we had a brilliant, brilliant idea. Brilliant idea. Okay, we so smart. Let me tell you something about being smart. Oh my. We gotta remember if God could speak through, and I'm gonna say what I want to say this Jackass. morning. If He can speak through a jackass as Balaam, and I'm not talking about me, I'm not the jackass. Uh -huh. But if He could speak through a jackass, He can speak through you and me. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Now that's something that would confound a wise, wise person. person. How in the world did He speak through that donkey? But guess what? It's recorded that he did. Okay. And guess what? I believe it. Amen. 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 You know, there was a saying a while back that said, if God said it, I believe it, that and that settles, settles it. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether you believe, believe it. If it God not. said it, it's settled. Settle. Whether you believe it or yeah. not, praise God. Amen. 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 Praise oh, God. Yeah. Like, we oh, got something yeah. to do with it. Oh, oh, I believe it, so that settles it. No. No. It's already settled in heaven. Amen. God Amen. said my word is already we settled. settled. So Amen. whether you believe it or not, that's on you. Okay. Amen. Uh -huh. You see, something happens to us, brothers and sisters, when we start to declare the testimony of God. Something changes in the atmosphere. That's what we're really talking about here today. The language of God. The language of God is a language filled. Listen, we can stand up here and read and pontificate piously from the King James. Amen. Amen. As much as I love King James, a lot of it is just so much gobbledygook, mm. you know, when you really need to get to the message. I love it. It's, it's poetic. It's beautiful. But sometimes you need to just get right to it. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be there trying to translate it, figure it out. You don't have time to mind for the goal. You need the goal to be right there to see it. Yes. Amen. Amen. And I'm a pro King James advocate. But we don't have to be all pious with it. Okay? And we don't, once we finally get the King James in, we don't need to be trying to reinforce ourselves with these over affirming high over the top, thought-provoking sermons so I can sound smart. smart. Yes. Using these $10 words, like pontificate. <laughs> oh my. I threw that in there just because I want y'all to know I know a big word. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Amen. And I didn't have to say that. All I had to do was say just to speak the truth. I don't have to say a little pontificate, but that sounds fancy, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Amen. It means to speak, to share your mind on something, to discuss, to elaborate. elaborate. He's smart. He's smart. I know he is. It, 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 means, it means to try to draw the pastor into your trap. <laughs> that, my friends, is my brother Jerry. <laughs> We always fight. Ah. I love him. I love him. Yeah. Now, we need to think about it, though. When we're doing all of that, all of that language, linguistic acrobatics, um, is it rooted in the power of the Holy Spirit? See, that's what matters, amen? Mm -hmm. The language we should be using is a language that is full of excitement. Because something happens when we start to speak the language of God. Something allows you to flow in the power through your testimony. Yes. It doesn't have to be with excellency of speech. Stand up and tell somebody what God did for you. Not what you know, but who you know. Amen. Amen. Tell them about God. You don't have to stand up and read them a passage of scripture. Tell them what God did for you. See, that's kingdom language. Yes. Amen? Yes. That's something you can prove. Somebody that knew you 10 years ago can look at you now and know something happened. You're right. talking because I'm not a citizen of this place, this place anymore. anymore. I changed my residence. Yes. Amen? Amen. I speak a different language. I walk a different walk, and I live by different rules. Amen? Right. Amen. Ooh, help me, Holy Ghost. 
The power of God manifests itself. Now, see, manifest is another one of them fancy words. That's a fancy word for saying that it shows up in a way that you can feel and that you can see. Amen. It's the power you feel when you begin to speak about what he has done for you. Okay. See, I don't need to tell you what he did for my mother mm -hmm. or my auntie or for my friend. I can tell you what he did for me. Yes. My experience, amen? Yes. Nobody can tell it like I can tell it. Okay. Amen? Because right. I know the facts. All right? Amen. I don't need to embellish. I'll tell you exactly what he did for me. And it's something about that, how he changed me. You know, it's something when you can tell somebody how he snatched you out of the pit of hell. Yes. Amen? And when you came out, you didn't smell like smoke. How he pulled you out of the world and how he set your foot on a solid rock, amen, and gave you a foundation and gave you a new life and life more abundantly. There's something about that. Mm -hmm. Something happens when you remember how he changed the impossible possible. to the possible. Mm -hmm. Whoo! Something happens when we begin to speak his language. His language is the language of grace and of love and of redemption. His language is the language of the cross, brothers and sisters. Mm. Paul spoke this language so eloquently in the second verse of our scripture text for this morning. He said, while I was with you, I decided to deal with only one subject. Paul came, he wasn't all over the place. Amen. He said, I'm going to talk to you about Jesus Christ and him crucified. Oh, that's it. That's Do you know that's all you need to know? All you need to know. That's all you need to know. Tell somebody Christ died Christ for you me. because he loved you that much. Yes. He died for me. I take the thing personally. He died for me. If it were the only one. Amen. I know he died for me because here I am a living witness as to how he can change a person's life. Amen. Because when I think about it, and I know what I know now, I was surely on my way to <laughs> a burning hell, I can't say it any other way, with a can of gasoline in my hands. Amen. My God. But God. But God. You may be asking yourself this question, and if you're not, guess what? You should be. How could Paul, with the highest level of education and his prestigious position within Judaism, make this statement that he didn't claim to know anything else except Jesus Christ and him crucified? How could he do that? Because, brothers and sisters, in essence, what he was saying was what he brought to the table was nothing at all. Amen. That all the time and effort and work that he had invested in the study meant nothing. Amen. Paul said, I count it all as dumb. Now, I don't need to even clarify what that is. This farm country, everybody knows what dumb is. Dumb. Amen. Yes. And those online that don't know, go look it up. <laughs> or just think about the words you might use yeah, okay. at this point in time. You see, Paul said, when I came to you, I didn't speak about God's mysteries as if it were some kind of brilliant message, message or wisdom. While I was with you, I decided to deal with only one subject, Jesus Christ, who was crucified. When I came to you, I was weak. I was afraid and very nervous. Yes. Yes. I didn't speak my message with persuasive intellectual arguments. Right. I spoke my message with a show of spiritual power so that your faith would not be based on human wisdom but on God's power. All right. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to hear somebody preaching a message like this every place in every church. Mm -hmm. Amen. But just imagine if we did. If we would just get behind this desk and preach Jesus Christ and him crucified, can you imagine what an outpouring of the Holy Spirit we would experience? Yes. Amen. How could Paul make this statement? Because, brothers and sisters, just like us, Paul had a past. Yes, he did. Hmm. I know I got one. Mm. Allow me to share a small portion of Paul's history with you from the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Listen to his past from chapter 8 of Acts and then a few verses from chapter 9 of Acts. Acts chapter 8, verses 1 through 3, and this is the NLT version, says, Saul 
was one of the witnesses, and he agreed completely with killing Stephen. A great wave of persecution began that day, sweeping over the church in Jerusalem, and all the believers except the apostles were scattered through the regions of Judea and Samaria. Some devout men came and buried Stephen with great mourning, but Saul was going everywhere to destroy the church. He went from house to house, dragging out both men and women to throw them in prison. My God. Amen. Now, that's part of Paul's past. It's before he was Paul. Then, Acts chapter 9, verses 1 and 2 says, Saul kept threatening to murder the Lord's disciples. He went to the chief priest and asked him to write letters of authorization to the synagogue leaders in the city of Damascus. Saul wanted to arrest any man or woman who followed the way, who was Jesus Christ, and imprisoned them in Jerusalem. Paul gave the order to kill Stephen. Now, if you're not familiar with who Stephen is, Stephen was the first deacon and the first martyr of the early New Testament church. Amen. The Bible says that Stephen was a man that was devout and full of the Holy Spirit. Right. So you know Paul can stand that. Paul persecuted the church, the Bible says. Said he wasted the church. And just like you and me, this is Paul's past. Paul had a name in the past, and his name in the past was Saul. Saul. Let me tell you something. When you have an encounter with God, like Paul had on the road to Damascus, he will change stuff about you. Yes, he will. Pastor talked about labels a couple of weeks ago. Somebody said you were lazy. Guess what? God changed that name. Okay. Can't nobody call you lazy anymore. No. Somebody might have called you an adulterer. Can't call you that now. Right. Amen. Right. Somebody might have called you a drunk. Guess what? That name has been changed. Hey. Amen. Amen. When you come in contact on your Damascus road with the Lord Jesus Christ, when you get up, your name is going to be changed. So to answer the question of how a man of Saul's reputation could make such a statement to the church of Corinth, we don't have to look any further than the next few verses in the book of Acts where it says, and before I go there, please say this with me again. It's not what you know. It's not what you know. It's who you know. It's who you know. Okay, a few verses down from what we just read. It says, as Saul was coming near to the city of Damascus, a light from heaven suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground, and he heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul asked, who are you, sir? The person replied, I am Jesus, Jesus. the one you are persecuting. All right. And then Jesus told him, get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you should do. Mm. I'm about to wrap up. Because, see, at that moment, all of Saul's education, all of his speaking ability, all, right. all of his wisdom and authority meant absolutely nothing. Because he had had an encounter with the risen Lord. Uh, when uh, you encounter Jesus, you must understand that things change real quick. Because it's not what you know, it's who you know. Yeah. So the next time you get a chance to testify, mm. my God. The next time you get an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Don't worry about how much education you have. Okay. Don't worry about what Bible college you did or didn't go okay. to. Don't be concerned about how many degrees you have or do not possess. No. Look the person in the eye and say, I don't know much, but one thing I do no. know. Ah, Jesus. Jesus Christ and Amen. him crucified. Oh, bless the Lord. Tell him, I don't know much, but I know this. I have a past, but one day. On the road to Damascus, I was surrounded by a marvelous light, and I fell on my knees. Mm. Tell him that. Jesus. Tell him I had an encounter with Jesus, and my life has been changed forever. Yeah. I don't know much, hallelujah yeah. to God, but I know what I used to be. And I know that now I can proclaim I am a child of God, and I speak the language of the kingdom. And that's all it is because Jesus came, and he was crucified yeah. for me. Amen. And at the end of the day, after all is said and done, what it's really all about is your faith. 
It's about standing firm on the foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ and the word of the Father. You must not build your faith or rest on the eloquent words of man, but in the power of God. And I'm going to close with this scripture and leave this with you to ponder from John chapter 8, verse 47. God's word translation says, the person who belongs to God mm -hmm. understands what God says. You don't understand because you, you don't, belong, don't to belong to God. That's what it says. Say it for me one more time. It's not what you know. It's not what you know. It's who you know. It's who you know. God bless you.